Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 87 of this RTS tutorial series. In this video, we'll be beginning our engineer tree. Now, this may take two or three videos to complete. In this video in particular, we're going to be working on how to find buildings and vehicles that need to be repaired. That said, I want to apologize for this coming out a day late. I've had some tech issues I'm still resolving. However, hopefully everything will be back on schedule within the next week or so. That said, fire up your project and let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to the editor. And in this video, we're gonna start setting up our behavior tree for our engineer unit so that he can repair buildings and vehicles. I know I said in the other video, I thought armor as well. I had to check my unit set up. The armor is handled by the support unit, which actually makes this job a bit easier. So we're actually gonna start by doing a little bit of setup and a test to make sure that setup works. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our AI and we're gonna create a new behavior tree. And this behavior tree will only house things related to our engineer unit. So right click, go to your artificial intelligence, behavior tree, and this will be our BT engineer unit. Pop that open, pin that into your board there if you want, go to your blackboard. Our blackboard is going to be our same one as before. Go ahead and save that, go back to your behavior tree, and then go into your behavior tree player base unit. Control S, save everything real quick. And over here we have this loop. We're gonna cut this loop for a second. We're gonna go into our behavior tree for our engineer, and we're gonna paste that into there, including the sequence, and, sorry, including the tasks. All right, save that. Go back to your main behavior tree, and from your engineer, type in behavior tree or behavior, and you want to run behavior. And this is a built-in task that will run a different behavior tree. You just need to tell it which behavior tree you want to run. And we're just gonna name this run engineer tree. And in here, we're gonna find our engineer unit. You'll see the loop shows up here, that's fine. We actually will get rid of that in a moment. All we want to do is make sure this tree is running. So this is a setup and the test, if we pop that open, is making sure this actually runs. And once we know this runs, we will delete this. So that said, let's go ahead and test this out. Find our unit and do job. All right, it's randomly running. So it is running the correct behavior tree. We can close that out. Again, we'll take care of these errors later on. I keep saying that. What we're actually doing is taking care of them as we do this. I am going to move the unit a bit for this test. I want him up this way. Actually, I want him near that tree over here, just so that he's near the center of the map. Because we start on zero, zero, based on that player start. I could have just moved the player start too. There's another reason I want the unit here. In fact, actually I want it over here. I want them to go to the training post first. And I'm doing this because there are gonna be a few bugs in what we do. And we're gonna work them out, don't worry. I just want you to be able to see those bugs before we work them out so you know why we are doing some of the things we are doing. All right, all that said, go back to your engineer tree. We can just cut that out for a minute. We're gonna paste that back into here. We're just gonna leave it to the side because we're gonna use it for the other ones to test as well. All right, control S, save this. Go back here, make sure that the loop is no longer there. If you still see the loop, go back to here, re-click the tree again that you want, and it'll get rid of the loop. All right, so let's go into here, and we need to consider what we need to have happen. Well, we need it to find damaged vehicles and buildings and repair them. Well, really what we're doing, if we think about this from a logic point of view, is we need to know, what is damaged, and we can approach this in multiple ways, and I'll talk about those in a minute, and where they are. Those are the two things we really need to know. So, what I am going to do, and it doesn't matter if you approach 
this differently. And again, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. We need to start with finding what's damaged. And if we think about this, going back to, say, our main tree here and go over to our fear branch, we're actually kind of replicating this. We're finding if a building is nearby. If it is, we go to the building. If it isn't, we go to the vehicle. That's what, or sorry, to the, I just gave away what we're going to do in a second. We go to a random place until we're near a building, then we run to the building. Well, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to see, is there a vehicle nearby? Is there a building nearby? Go to one of them if it's damaged. There's another hint, by the way, for a bug I'm going to show. If it's damaged being the key word. So be mindful. I'm going to do something intentionally wrong in order to explain the logic. Again, we'll clean this up as we go through this. So, now the part that you can approach differently is how you want to determine, does it go to a car or a building first? Does it only check for buildings and then check for cars? Does it only check for cars, then check for buildings? Does it check for both and check how far away everything is and take the closest? All those are valid approaches. I am going to use a third one of those. So I'm going to take everything that's damaged and go, what is closer? Go there. And it's going to check, is that thing a building or is it a vehicle? So what we're going to have is a selector. And that selector is going to be determining, all right, vehicle, building. From this, then we're going to have two branches. And each branch will be a sequence. So let's just name this sequence on the right here, our building repair sequence. And the one on our left, our vehicle repair. It really doesn't matter what order these are in. I know I said, you know, reads left to right in blueprints, or sorry, behavior trees. But because we're using a selector, it's only going to want to run, it's only going to run one of the branches at a time. It's not going to go, I did the vehicle repair onto the building repair. It's going to go, all right, buildings nearby, go here. Vehicles nearby, go here. Another vehicle's nearby, go here. Also part of the reason why I moved the unit is I wanted to hit the buildings first. The vehicle is actually much simpler to handle in terms of error. All right, so now that we have that set up, we need to set up something that's going to determine what is nearby that's damaged. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new service. So we wanna create a BTS, BT service blueprint base. Go ahead, click that. Go back to your main window, and in here, I'm just going to rename this as BTS, Eng for engineer, find target. And you could do this as a decorator instead if you wanted. Uh, it does not work as a task. I tried three approaches just to humor myself and to see which one I liked the best. But I figured, actually, AI is hard enough that it's we're going to learn one approach and not worry about all the other approaches because the other units are going to be built on the same sort of principles we're using here. And I was thinking, you know, I'll go more into this when we get to the support unit, actually, and why we're using services. So I'm just going to go to my services folder real quick. I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm just going to name that engineer. And I'm going to extend this little sucker out a bit and drag my BTS and find target into my engineer folder there, move it, and let's go into here. So we now have our service. And remember, our services are pretty much ticks. So we're going to search for our AI tick. So event, receive, I always reverse the E in the I. And I say that in a couple of videos. Event, receive, tick, AI. Now, we need to have a reference to our pawn in this one. Now, casting on ticks, as I said in other videos, is horrendously idiotic. It is, just don't do it. it. It's no, it's bad. Unless you know how to do it properly. And the proper way to do it is you do it once. Remember, a tick goes off multiple times. This is going to fire. Even when they attach a selector here, even when we're down in this branch here, this is going to keep firing and firing and firing and firing. It doesn't matter. It's still repairing a building. This is going to keep firing which means this is gonna keep going off. And because this keeps going off, if we have a cast here, we're casting multiple times a second. And if we have many engineer units doing this, that can eat up a lot of resources. So 
we cast in that smart way that I've been showing you through the last several videos. We are going to do our cast to our unit master. Ooh, excuse me, my voice cracks here. Or you can even cast to the engineer unit. I'm gonna use unit master for this one. I will use the engineer unit for our next cast we do. And we do not want this impure cast. We want a pure cast. So we're gonna convert it over. And we're gonna promote this to a variable. And this variable will be our unit reference. And as always, our references category. I almost typed in the word category. And we only want to do this if this reference is not valid. So if it is not valid, the first time this fires, we'll cast. The second time this fires, this will be valid and we'll just go right on long. We don't need to worry about it. All right, now here comes the first mistake I'm going to do. After this, that is. So, so here comes the first mistake I'm going to do. And it's gonna be full of a lot of mistakes actually and we're gonna clean those up as we go. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna get my unit reference and I'm going to drag off of this and I'm going to update my building list. Sorry, I skipped one small step. I'm gonna get off my unit reference, I'm gonna get my controller reference. So from our controller, we're going to update our building list. And I can't remember which version I have in here. Okay, I had the one without the extra bit here. Um, if you want to be a little bit cheeky about how you do this, instead of what we're about to do, where I'm gonna pull out the second time, you can go into here and plug into the return pin this list of constructed buildings so you can actually just pull it off of here instead of doing list of constructed buildings like that. Both are completely option, are completely valid. However, I'm getting ahead of myself. That is gonna be part of the cleanup we do later on. So ignore that I just pointed it out, giving you a hint to something that's gonna be wrong in a second or in a few minutes. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna plug the cast into there and the is valid into there. And we're gonna take all of this and we're gonna collapse this down to a macro. And this will be our reference cast macro. And honestly, I am going to undo all of that. I'm gonna break that for a second and I'm gonna plug that back in, put a reroute in. I do not need two execute pins coming out. And then I'm gonna grab everything, including that reroute and now collapse it down to macro. This will be our reference casts. This will be our then pin. This will be our execute pin. And this will be our unit reference pin. Move that over that way and move this over here. All right, so now that we've done that, we have a list of our buildings updated. And this is gonna fire a lot. So there's a wee bit of an issue there, but again, that's cleanup that you guys can take care of elsewhere. That isn't the issue I was talking about. It is a bit of a problem. The next thing we are going to do, however, is we are going to pull from this and we're going to get all actors of class. Again, off a tick, might not be the smartest idea. We're gonna do RTS ground vehicle master. And we are going to take these and just to make our lives a little bit easier, we could make an array right off of this array of actor of, of the out actors here, but we're gonna do a for each loop instead. And it just makes life a tiny bit easier because what we can do is we don't have to worry about clearing this as much. If we did off here, we have to clear this every single time, which actually is something we're gonna end up doing. It's one of the issues. But what we're going to do instead is we're gonna add unique that way we don't end up with an extra long array of useless things by mistake. So remember, you know, if you run this thing five times in a second and there are no new vehicles in that time, this list will not get updated because we're only adding in unique items. And this will be my list of all vehicles. All right, I am going to then take all of these nodes here and I'm going to collapse them down to a function and this will be my get targets function. So just move that up to there, pop back into here for a moment and I'm not gonna worry about that line. Yeah, that line not being straight. I'm gonna add in my return node, however. All right, 
Let's go back down to here. And very quickly, I'm going to go back into here, remove that return node, and put it down here. The return node comes off the completed. Sorry about that. All right, let's go back here. And now in our event graph, the next thing we need to do is we need to find our distances. So, first thing, grab your unit reference. Get it? Get your controller reference. And we want a list of all constructed buildings, or constructed buildings, whatever I called it. And remember, I said earlier, we're gonna pull this off, off elsewhere. So think about this, this is gonna be another problem. So for each loop. Now if you haven't worked out what the problem is, remember what we are trying to do and what this is. Just think about that for a few minutes if you haven't figured out what the issue is yet. All right. Now that we have that, what we're going to do is what we've done before. We did it in the engineering, sorry, in the harvester unit. We've done it elsewhere. We are going to take this array element and we're going to get distance two. And the other actor is going to be our unit. We are then going to take this and we're going to do add unique. And honestly, it doesn't matter. It's always going to be unique if the unit's moving. So it could just be add. But meh. All right. And then pull back from here, promote to variable. This will be building. So I can't tell if I had the L in there or not. Building distances. So now that we've done that loop, let's just move this over a bit. We're going to come off our completed here and do one more for each loop. This loop will have our list of all our vehicles going in. And I'm just going to put this into a category so my left gets a little bit easier. This will be my target lists and this will be my distances list all right and again we're going to repeat the same thing we're just actually going to take all of that minus the building distances control w duplicate plug that into the loop body and array element into our target take this promote to variable this will be our vehicle i really cannot see what i'm typing because my new microphone and pop filter are covering up more of the screen than I'm used to. Vehicle distance. Actually, it should be distances. Because it's an array. I mean, it really doesn't matter. It's just for ease of use, the names. All right. Now we have that. I'm going to take all of these nodes again. I'm going to collapse them down to a function. And this will be our get distances. Now, I am, however, going to break this connection. Go into here real quick, move that up there, come down to this complete node and put a return in. So remember off the complete, off the second completed is our return. I'm gonna go back to our graph here and I'm gonna take my building distances and I'm going to clear it. And I'm going to take my vehicle distances and I'm going to clear it as well. Plug those two clears into each other and we're just going to plug that execute in the second clear to our get distances and that first execute into our get targets. So we get our targets, we clear our distance lists. If they're already cleared, hey, no problem. But the second time this fires, we don't want to add in extra distances. We've done this before. You should know why we are doing this step. We are going to collapse this down to a function. This function will be our clear distances. Now, the reason why we did this second was we didn't have a reference to these distances yet. Pop that open. Put your reroutes in. I said reroutes. Your return values. And I did not mean to comment that out. Sorry about that. Um, so put your return nodes in. Train things up if you want. Go back to your event graph. And we're ready to go on to the next part of this service. All right. So the next thing we want to do once we've gotten the distances is we want to say what's closer, what's farther. So what we are going to do is we are going to do a branch. And on this branch, we are going to have a condition that will take our building distances and our vehicle distances. And we are going to compare the smallest value in each of these arrays to each other. And this is where you can prioritize one over the other. And we are going to see which is closer. 
So I want to prioritize buildings over vehicles. So I'm going to do less than, oops, sorry. I'm going to do min float array. And I'm going to duplicate this min float array in a second. I'm just going to give myself a little bit more room. Control W, put that down here, line those up. And I'm going to pull off this min value and I'm going to do less than or equal to. So if you want to prioritize building of vehicles, you might just do this the other way around. If it's equal, that's what's prioritizing really in the end of the day, the buildings over the vehicles. And I'm going to plug that into there. And just to be a bit cleaner, I am going to collapse this down to a function. This will be our select building or vehicle function. It will be a pure function and the return value will be building is closer. So if a building is closer, then we will target a building. So we're gonna have something that's gonna be a little bit familiar to you. And we're also gonna have a bit of an issue in this. So again, this is gonna be a bit of a bug. Uh, and again, we'll clean that up either in the next video or the video after. It really does depend on how long it takes us to get through the next part of the engineer, which will be the next video. So right now we're just doing all the setup for it and the selector. So in here, what we're going to do is we are going to start by getting our unit. And I'm just gonna move this up here actually. From our unit, we want to get, oh sorry, not get, set target building and we're going to plug that into the true don't worry about you know it not being straight i'm going to collapse this down to a function as well all right so and again slight problem what i'm about to do remember i hinted at something in the get targets about the way i'm getting the buildings is problematic if you haven't worked out what it is again think about what we are doing we want to target damaged buildings there's your final hit on it before we resolve it in the next video or so. All right, we're gonna get our controller reference. I say that I probably dropped, that's the wrong controller. Probably drop more hints in the next video. Get controller ref, there we go. And we are going to get list of constructed buildings. From this, we are then going to get our building distances. And we are going to take the min value again. And we're gonna get the index at that value. And then we are going to plug that into our getter here. All right, I do wanna worry about these being a bit neater because I am gonna put that into the function. And then the next thing we're going to do, and this is going to be um, something we've done previously and why we only have two branches instead of five in this tree here is we are going to set our target. So we are going to get our unit reference. We are going to get our target building. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to get the class of this building. And you remember I banged out about class defaults last time. We've used class defaults elsewhere. We're gonna do so again here. So get class defaults and here all the default information that goes into that particular class of our target buildings, which is our building master. The only one we care about is our building name. So we're gonna switch on building name. To make this a bit neater, I'm gonna highlight our get class defaults and click hide unconnected pins. And I'm gonna plug this execute into our switch. And now we're gonna need to create two new variables. So variable one will be our, our location type enum. And all we're gonna do with that is we're gonna search for our building name enum. And the other one we need right now is our location type. And location type will be our blackboard key selector. Make sure that you can edit this. Oh my God. I keep saying, I keep going to say that in videos and my test files, I keep trying to do it. Make sure you can edit it. This will go into our Blackboard key folder. I think I've been naming it Blackboard selector. So Blackboard selector. And I'll leave this uncategorized for now. It doesn't really matter. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this 
four times. So the first time will be our factory. Second time will be our training post, just like we did in our fear branch when we were checking if a building was nearby. Like I said, we're kind of replicating our fear branch a tiny bit. All right. So just like we did with that before, we're gonna grab our location type and we're gonna set value as enum. Now it would have been a little bit faster had I just did the factory set value as enum and then just duplicated that instead of duplicating the enum alone and then doing this step. Sorry about that. Again, we need four of those. And yes, I copied the reroute as well. Plug that into there. Plug the execute in. Move that out of the way. Move that up there. Sorry about the slightly chantiness to my voice as I say that. And there's really no way to make this pretty in my opinion, so I'm not gonna worry too much about things not lining up. I could, but I'm not going to. I have evolved. All right, and then, uh, well, we'll take care of that in a second. So we're gonna take all, everything after this branch here we have, and we're going to collapse it down to a function. And I should have renamed my function before moving that. This will be our target building function. All right, let's just move this back up here. Go into here and line that up to there. And then do our return nodes. Sorry, return node singular. We're just gonna plug it all into these executes here. There we go. All right. Now we just need to take care of our target vehicles. And this one's gonna be a bit different. We, and to explain why it's gonna be a bit different, let's go to our behavior tree here for a second. Let's pop open our move to location task, which is the same if you're fleeing to a random location or entering a building. In here, if you look through uh, set location, we have nothing that handles vehicles. We have blank. So blank will be landscape so far, which has just been a random variable that we create in this task here, this get location. But now what we needed to do, if I can find where I've opened it to, there it is. We need to be able to pass into here a location pre-existing. So when we get to move, this right here has something. Also, this is gonna be an issue. And I mentioned there's a reason why I moved the unit. The issue is in here. That, that's one of your hints, just so you're aware to think about what's going on here. And I'm gonna dance around this part of the screen intentionally, because the issue is in this part of the screen, hint, hint. Okay, so now that I've done my little ramble, let's go back to our find target here, and let's take care of the targeting of a vehicle. So, all we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our unit reference. We are going to target vehicle. We get our target vehicle and we need to know which vehicle we're targeting. So we're gonna get our list of vehicles. We are gonna get from this a getter for a copy. And we're gonna use the same approach as we did for our building. So we're gonna get our vehicle distances. I just wanna make sure I actually did buildings here, not vehicles by accident. I did do buildings, good. All right, back to our event graph. Min value of float or min float array, and we wanna get the index of that value. And now we know what value, what target we want. We're gonna to go to that target. Plug that into the false there. And now, before we go any further, what we're going to do is we are going to take our unit and we are going to get our target vehicle. Huh, we're gonna pop those open real quick. And we're gonna select that and we're going to rename this. What is that under vehicle movement? So vehicle movement, this is actually the wrong name. This is a setter, not a getter. Sorry about that. Okay, close that out. We don't need that anymore. Go back here and we wanna get target vehicle. 
There we go. All right. Now, the next thing we need is one more variable for this to work, and that is target location. And again, make sure this is something that is can be edited by the behavior tree. Yes, I avoided saying that word. You know exactly what happened there. All right, put it into the category if you want. If you don't want, well, that's on you. And we are going to get actor location. There we go. We're going to just line that up, move this down here, target location, get it, and set blackboard, blackboard value as vector. So this is that vector that I was pointing to in that random move to. So now we're giving it a location instead of it being random. That is the vehicle. And in fact, there's actually nothing in here we need to clean up later on, by the way. So we're just going to take all of this. I can get it all in one go and collapse a function. This will be our target vehicle function. And just pop that back open and put our return node in. Let's go back to our behavior tree. And in our selector, all we're going to do here is we're going to add a new service. And we're going to add our engineer find target and move these down here. Now, make sure to set your location type to location type. And yes, my voice intentionally went high there. I didn't expect it to crack. Sorry about that. And our target location to target location. Not sure why it wouldn't let me open that menu. Control S save. Now, at recording, I'm about 31 minutes in and we still have a fair amount to go. However, we can test this out slightly and we can see some of the bugs. So we're just gonna pull off the repair building here and we're gonna go for a task, move to location. And this will be enter building. And our location target is our, our target location is target location. Our residence is residence, even though we're not using it. Our location type is location type and our status is status. And we're gonna duplicate this over here. And this will be move to vehicle instead. Okay. Now, this is just for testing. We're actually gonna use these two, so we've done part of what we need to do for the next video. In the next video, we actually need to handle one more task for each of these, so it'll be the same task. It'll just be doing different things, depending on which branch it's in. And we need to do some of the cleanup that I was talking about in our service. So hopefully we'll be able to knock that all out in one video. It might take two, but let's go test this out. Make sure this works. Hit play. Our unit's doing nothing. Good, it shouldn't. She should not be moving. So let's click her and let's hit do job. There we go. It's moving to the building. You see it disappear into the building and now it's spazzing out. Now, why is it spazzing out? Well, let's go into here. I'm not sure why it's doing move to vehicle, but it is at a building. It is now not sure what to do with itself and we haven't released it from the building. Let's test this out a little bit. Let's go back to our unit and let's move the unit towards the vehicle. I am gonna move it back to where we have it right now after this test, just to make sure that everything is working. Let's move our nice little Manny the mannequin here over. I'm holding shift to move the camera with the unit by the way like that. And I'm just going to move it close to the vehicle like that. I am definitely closer to a vehicle than I am to a building. Hit play. Find our lovely little unit here. Do job. And you notice it moves to the vehicle. All right. And it's still moving to the vehicle. That's why it's pushing it. Remember when I had, we first hit the vehicle and we could push the vehicle around? Well, the unit now is constantly moving to the vehicle due to one of those bugs I was talking about earlier. That bug is simply we don't have it doing anything else, so it doesn't know to finish the sequence. So the AI right now is going, I need to rerun the sequence over and over and over and over and over again. We need to tell it to one, repair the vehicle over the building, because it didn't do that if you uh, didn't notice, and two, to stop <laughs> that it's done with the sequence. All right, that said, if you've enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed watching this thing make some weird art, go ahead and hit that like button. If you wanna be here when that next video comes out where we take care of finishing out the task, hit that subscribe and notify icon. 
If you want to help the channel out, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. All of that said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.